Hello and welcome back. This time we will talk about so-called printed circuit boards or PCBs. We will talk about why we need a PCB. We will um, talk about um, how they are made up. Um, we will also talk about how they are manufactured. As a rough outline, um, you will get some links. Um, and one link is the following. Um, when I had the idea or when I thought about how I can make this video, um, I first thought about having a PowerPoint presentation and then just talk a little bit or guide you through the slides. Um, but I think that this page here on sparkfun.com is so well made that I will just simply give you the link to that page and then you can uh, read it on your own and then uh, we will just go through that uh, that page now together a little bit. Um, also what you will get are the links to some videos where we for example can see how a PCB is made because obviously um, I cannot make that at home. I would love to have an own PCB factory at home but unfortunately uh, I do not have that. So um, Maybe first let's start with why the hell do we need a PCB? Why do we need a PCB? Um, let's imagine the following. You have the idea for a new product, let's say, and on this product you want to have some buttons, you want to have some LEDs, you want to have a microcontroller, um, and you draw a schematic for that. But now we need to go from a theoretical schematic to a physical implementation, okay? Um, and I mean like for quick and dirty prototyping you could for example use a breadboard. So um, a breadboard basically is a grid where you can plug in components, you can plug in some wires, you do your circuitry, your connections, and you simply uh, test if it's blowing up or not, yeah? or if, if, if it's doing what it should do. Okay, this is one approach. Um, another pr approach could be to use um, something uh, like a so-called perf board. This is just some base material. Um, on the um, back side of this material you have some pads. You stick through your components. You can solder them from the back side um, and then use something like for example those wires here uh, to make the connection. Um, those wires here, they are, are actually quite interesting because they have an insulating paint around them, so they're not really um, having or causing a short if they touch something conductive here. But instead, if you heat this paint up, if you, for example, put this wire into uh, liquid solder, then this paint will dissolve and you will have a... Um, electrical connection just you know for example here or then at the other point where this wire is going. Um, this wire also is frequently used if you want to fix broken PCB or um, if you have um, a buggy PCB so there is an error on that and you want to fix that. Uh, however of course this is basically a bad hack and you should try to uh, avoid those wires. Okay, um, let's go a little bit back in history to understand why or how the the, the, P, the idea of a PCB evolved. So um, this is an image how it used to be in the back in the days, uh, also when components used to be a little bit di uh, bigger. So here we have some kind of base material with um, long pins going through and now the individual connections um, have been made just with wire. And interesting enough, um, this is not really a prototyping approach, but um, they actually flew to the moon with such a technology. So this for example now, if I could zoom in, which I can't, um, this is for example now an image of, what is it? The Apollo guidance computer, I guess it's just a part of it. But still, I mean like they flew to the moon 
uh, in the late 60s with such an approach when with all wires and of course such a rocket is it's, it's shaky um, you have a lot um, of, of temperature differences and this is just a matter of time when when such a wire will become loose uh, but this is the technology they had and they, they 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 made it and i mean like this is i think this is very impressive but we have now better approaches and uh, which are for example pcbs let's maybe have a look at this image here um what can we see on this image we can see that we have a couple of components and we have this yeah it is a pcb but <laughs> what what uh, how is it how is it made up so the general idea of a pcb is that we do have some um, non-conductive material um, and on top of this non-conductive material we have conductive copper and we will take away material from this um, conductive copper to just leave so-called traces or basically those are just wires interconnecting all the components and this already is the basic idea of the pcb because with this approach now if we if we have a look at it again um, you can build very small circuitries or dense circuitries connecting everything uh, the wires cannot really become loose um, because well they are you know just on on, on that base material um, and also you have uh, dedicated spots where the connection um, of the components to the circuitry is happening Okay, now that we understood what um, a PCB roughly is, um, we can now dig a little bit deeper into the details of a PCB. So, um, first of all, let's go back to this very nice schematic here of the composition. So, I already mentioned that we have this non-conductive base material here uh, in the middle. So, this uh, also like the, the physical um, plate where everything is... Um, is mounted on. Um, typical material for that is the so-called FR4. This is some fiberglass composite, non-conductive. Um, on top of that there is a thin layer of copper. What does thin mean? So typically we have a copper thickness of 35 micrometers, though there are other thicknesses around. If you check KiCad, you will see that there is a PCB calculator and with this calculator this was the wrong um, with this calculator now you can also calculate the trace thickness with a certain copper thickness um, and a given current and from that you have to derive um, how thick the copper should be I mean like you have two parameters you can make make the um, the, the, the copper a little bit thicker uh, or you can make the trace a little wider so what means the trace wider so this connection for example here uh, obviously if this uh, layer of copper is a little thicker then it can handle more current um, especially if you build devices uh, or PCBs which have to handle high currents this becomes critical um, for the stuff we do now in this lab where it's mainly, uh, you know, uh, analog or digital sickness, they, this is not that important. There the wires are usually a little bit thinner. All right, but still, we have the base material, we do have the copper on top, we already talked about that. Then we do have the so-called solder mask or solder stop mask. What is this stuff? This stuff basically is this paint you can see here. In this case now it is purple. But if you uh, if you order your PCB, then you can choose what color it should be. And um, the solar stop has two main purposes. Of course, first of all, it's basically just an insulation for the entire circuitry because we want to protect everything against shorts or whatever from the outside. We want to have it non-conductive. Um, the other purpose is if you think about 
if you have a milled PCB such as, for example, this one, and you would now, now try to solder it in individual, individual pad, then by accident you could very easily create a short uh, if the solder now would connect, uh, maybe for example from here to here or from here to here. So, uh, and simply to avoid that, we have the solder mask which leaves only the um, areas open um, where we actually want to bring in solder. Yeah, so this is now a green PCB. Now we have the purple PCB again. Okay, now we know how PCB is made up, um, but the next interesting question will be, okay, um, if we have um, a PCB like that, and um, we cannot do everything in two-dimensional space here. So very often if you have, for example, a wire going from all the way from back here, down here to up here, if you now want to go, let's say, for example, from this component here to this button here, uh, then you would have to cross this trace. Um, and how this is done is that you have so-called wires here. So this is basically, if we check the web, what is a wire in the context of a PCB. Um, a wire is simply a hole. Wire or circuits, yes. Um, it's basically just a hole. Um, and this hole is now um, filled with an inlay of copper and it will connect the upper copper layer to the copper layer which is on the back. So, um, for example, if we go back to this image here, we can see that we have a layer of copper on the top but as well uh, on the bottom. This is not always the case. There are single-sided PCBs which only have uh, a layer of copper on one side, but usually um, we use um, PCBs which have a uh, layer of copper. I don't know how they're called. Double-sided PCBs? I don't know. Uh, but which have a layer of copper on both sides. And what we can do with those wires is that, yes, get connected, is that we connect the um, the or create a connection from one side to the other. So in our example here, for example, at this spot we have this trace here, maybe coming from a microcontroller. Now we have wires. Um, it's going through maybe to the other side, and then on the back side we have another trace going. I don't know, maybe to here, and then it's coming back again and going here. Um, what should maybe be said about those wires if you have a PCB mill then this PCB mill so if you for example do some uh, prototyping at the university then this mill uh, can drill a hole and create the pad but we usually do not have the connection uh, through this hole so this is something we have to do manually by for example sticking a wire through that hole soldering from both sides um, yeah, which can be a pain there are other approaches around but this is not really reliable. If we order a PCB uh, from a shop, from a PCB shop, then they will do this stuff for us. Okay, so for now we have only talked about two layered PCBs, so one layer on a copper, uh, copper layer on top, uh, one uh, copper layer on bottom. Uh, though there are, I mean, like this is perfectly fine for simple circuits, which we, for example, have at the university, but if you, for example, um, would have a look at the PCB of, let's say, an iPhone, then we can see that this is extremely dense and you cannot make all the connections uh, just on two layers. But instead, what is going on, I think maybe it's also on this side. Is it? Is it? No, it's not on this side. But I already saw it. It's this here. We can also have multi-layer PCBs. So 
what is the idea here? We not only have one PCB with one layer of copper here, one layer of substrate here, another layer of copper here, but instead we simply kind of in a sandwich approach <laughs> Thank you! Um, we simply add more layers of base material and copper to that. And with this approach we can now make a lot more connections on the same physical PCB area. However, what should be noted is that those PCBs are more expensive, obviously, because they are more complicated to be produced. Um, and on the other hand, we have stuff like, for example, those bird vias here, uh, which interconnect the uh, layers just in between and of course you cannot probe this um, and it's a little bit um, yeah, more difficult but again like if you simply have to do it because um, you, your, your design or your circuitry is so complex and you want to have everything very dense on a very small PCB then you have to go on multi-layer and that's already it for what is a PCB as announced in the beginning, I want to give you some links uh, which you should use to learn a little bit more about that and watch videos by guys who actually can do it, <laughs> not like I do it right now. So the first link is PCB Basics. This is simply the page I've just shown you. Um, this is a, a video of a German company or a Europe company. Um, they explain on their own, like in a classical marketing video kind of thing, um, how a PC four-layer PCB is made. And this video down here is like a maker, hacker, private guy visiting um, a PCB, PCB factory in China and is just walking around and showing how everything is working. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time for others. Bye!